LTR 1100 is a telescopic crawler crane with a maximum capacity of 100 tonnes. It has been modelled in the colours of many different companies, and this particular version is in the colours of Habo, which is a Dutch maritime services company. The packaging consists of a Liebherr branded sleeve so we can slide out the trays from one end, and the first thing that comes out with them is the instruction sheet. And it's good enough as it describes all of the main features of the model, the photos are nice and clear and it's always good to see a fully itemised parts list. And as long as you hold it the right way up, there are also instructions in a number of different languages. Let's move on and lift the lid on the box. And we get to see the model, which is not in an Australian configuration, it's just that the box is the wrong way round. It's tightly packed with parts, including a couple of bags. To start the assembly we'll separate some plastic bolts from the sprig, and the first use for them is to attach the jacks to the undercarriage. These jacks are used to raise the crane up if the crawler tracks are removed, and on the model the jacks work because you can unscrew them to lower the pads. Each of the four jacks is held in place by a couple of pins, and as long as you line the holes up properly they're a good fit. The next item to bolt on is the auxiliary winch. And again, all that's needed is to feed in four plastic bolts into the pinning positions. One nice aspect of the model is the self-raising counterweight system. And the assembly of that starts by attaching chains to the lifting system. That is a little bit fiddly, but when you've got it done, you can then feed them into the lift cylinders. What we're doing here is to assemble the model into a transport configuration. And so the next thing to do is to add a hook to a supplied and a nice metal parts with metal pulleys. For shipping, the winch rope is secured in place by some black tape, and if that's peeled off, you can then pull out as much winch rope as you need. You can then get on with the fun job of reeving up the hook, and fortunately this one is fairly straightforward and easy to do. There's no tying off point provided, so here the thread's been taken back to the top axle and then snipped off. The last bit of assembly is to fix the auxiliary jib, and firstly there are a couple of plastic brackets which clip into place. They're not the same size, but the bigger one goes at the front. Once the clips are in place, you can then hang the auxiliary jib onto the brackets. And with that done, the model's then complete in a transport configuration. Looking underneath, there's no detail on the undercarriage, but the metal tracks are good. And they're mounted on decent looking frames, but there's no working rollers. Between the tracks, the ballast boxes are metal and they have usable lifting lugs. This model first appeared in 2007, so some of the detailing is simple, and the cab is one example. The Habo graphics are mostly sharp and the colour scheme is attractive. At the rear, the counterweight system is detailed and the Liebherr name is cast in relief. Detailing within the body is fairly simple and is limited to the exhaust system. The main boom ram jacket is plastic but with a very good colour match to the metal parts. And one nice improvement on the later versions of these models is that all the pulleys are metal. Finally, the two hooks are both good quality metal parts. For a change, the first feature we'll look at is the flexibility it has in being used as a transport load. As you see here, it is a good fit on a low loader with a wide bed. But in fact, it is also possible to unclip the crawler tracks. It's not mentioned in the instructions, but it is possible. The crane looks good on a low loader on its own, but if you've got two suitable trucks, you can then form a mini diorama and use the rest of the parts of the crane to fit onto a second truck. And to complete the true cranes etc look, you can add a few lazy stand around workers. Moving on to the test of the crawler tracks and they won't roll on a smooth surface. 
but the mechanism is pretty loose and it turns well by hand. But the machine is designed for rough terrain, so let's get the track something they can bite into. And then they roll very well when you push the model along. There is another feature of the crawler tracks, which is that they are extendable. So they can be narrow for transport and widened out when they're at work to give a better base for the crane. The other way to increase stability is to add some weight and the ballast boxes just hook over on each end. And then we can look to add some proper counterweight. The model is good because the counterweight has all been supplied in separate pieces just like the real crane. And you can stack it up and then get it ready for self ballasting. So here the crane goes reversing up into position ready to lift its own counterweight. But to do that you need to pin the chains into position. But this is a fiddly frustrating job and it can cause you to punch your own head off. But if you do manage to keep your head on and make the pinned connections, then it's possible to lift the counterweight with the chains. And that's what the real crane would do, it would use the cylinders to lift up the counterweight so it can be attached. Finally pinning the counterweight into position on the model is another tricky job, because you need to engage the plastic pins a bit further. With the attachment made you can lower the lifting rams. Moving on to some of the other features and the crane rotates but it's a bit stiff, so it might need to be turned a few times to stop the driver spilling his coffee. But to make sure he does spill the coffee you can tilt the cab. Raising the boom is just done in a normal way by pulling it up, but you might need to go down the gym for some training because it is very very stiff. Still that does mean it will hold any angle rather than flopping down. Extending the boom is just done in a normal way for these telescopic cranes. The sections can all be pulled out in turn and they slide fairly smoothly. To maintain the pose at the maximum extension there's the usual locking system in the telescopic sections. The last configuration option available is to put the auxiliary jib onto the end of the boom and because of paint thicknesses it's a fairly tight fit. Once it's on you open it up to get the operating angle and it's fixed into place with some fairly long plastic pins. One issue though is that the secondary hook has two pulleys and that means it doesn't hang straight because you can only use one of the pulleys. If you want to operate the winches you have to turn them by your finger or thumb so if you do a lot of it expect to wear through to the bone. One other nice thing is that when it's fully extended you do get a big and impressive model. As for how big well let's put the tape on and it's about 43 inches or 110 centimeters. This model first appeared in 2007 so the level of detailing is not high but it makes up for it in terms of features and flexibility. This Habo limited edition certainly looks smart and overall the model is highly recommended. Music